Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to my chemistry videos. The title of this video is the Heisenberg's Uncertainty Principle. In the previous videos, we have been discussing the structure of an atom and I told you about the Bohr's atomic model. And then I told you about the dual nature of electron, that is dual nature of matter and how de Broglie, he gave this relationship between the wavelength and momentum of an electron and he established the fact that all matter has both particle-like and wave-like properties but the wave-like properties are not visible in macroscopic objects due to the mass in the denominator and hence the wavelength is so small that it's not noticeable. Moving ahead with this thought, Heisenberg now started thinking that let us see if the Bohr's model of atom was right. So Werner Heisenberg, what did he do? He said, we want to know, we want to find out the, uh, the position and the momentum of an electron to know its trajectory. If I take a ball and I throw it in air and if I know the momentum of the ball, I know where exactly it is at certain points and I know the forces that are acting on it. It is possible for me to determine the trajectory of the ball that I threw into the air. I, the gravity acting on it, the forces, other forces which may be acting on the ball. But it is possible for me to determine the trajectory of an object. So he said that in the case of an electron too, if I want to find out the trajectory or the path that it follows, I should, what, what are the two requirements that I would have? One would be to know the position of an electron at any particular instant and the momentum of the electron. If you know the position and the momentum, it is possible to find out the path. And he wanted to see if the paths given the orbits which were uh, told, uh, talked about by Bohr, were they right or not. Now, if I have to measure something in a line in centimeters, if I have to measure something in centimeters, if you notice, the scale has calibration. If I'm measuring in centimeters, it'll have calibration in millimeters. That is the measurement that you make your scale should always have a unit smaller than the one that you want to measure. So if I want to measure centimeters, let us say that it is one centimeter is here, then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the tenth is again a centimeter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the tenth. So if this is one centimeter and I have one, two, three, four, one point this is the length of the line that I have then it would be 1.4 centimeters isn't it that's how it is you will your calibration should always be of a unit smaller than the one that you are measuring in so that your measurement is accurate if my scale had inches in it and I wanted to calculate the length in centimeters would it be possible it would be that's logic. You need a unit that's smaller than the one that you're trying to measure. Only then can you make your accurate measurement. So how is this significant? Heisenberg felt that if we have to find out the exact position of an electron in an atom, then we should, we should put light over it, electromagnetic radiations over it, which should have a wavelength which is smaller than the, than the size of an electron. It's only when you have a wavelength smaller than that, that you would be able to tell what is the position of the electron. Now the problem with that was, de Broglie had told us that wavelength is equal to h over mv or the momentum and wavelength are inversely proportional. If the wavelength is very very short then the momentum of the incident radiation would be very high in other words it will be a, a radiation with a high frequency and if the frequency or the momentum of the radiation or the incident photon is very high when it comes and it hits the electron you will know in that instant okay the electron was present here but the moment it hits the electron, it pushes it with so much force because you have to use light of very high frequency and very, very low wavelength. And when you do that, the electron is moved away from its orbit. So you can see where the electron was in the instant, but you cannot 
follow its momentum or its motion. On the other hand, if you want to find out the motion of an electron, what would you do? You would have to use, you want to see the path and you, what will you do? You will increase the wavelength so that you can at least observe where the electron is moving. But the problem with that is that you will see the path, but you will not be able to see the position of an electron. So although you're seeing the path, you're not sure if the electron is there 100%. Because you can see the path, okay, the electron moved along this, but you can't see the position. This led Heisenberg to realize that it is actually impossible to find out exactly both the position and momentum of an electron. It's absolutely impossible to find out both simultaneously. And this was known as the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. That there is some amount of uncertainty in the measurement. And this uncertainty is at least h over 4 pi. So he said the product of the uncertainty in position, which is delta x, and the uncertainty in momentum, which is delta p, is always greater than h upon 4 pi or whatever measurements you make your answer between the position and the momentum of an object your you will always have an error of h over which is greater than h over 4 pi now he delta x is the difference in the position that is the error in the position and Momentum is mass into velocity. Mass of an object does not change. Therefore, the mass comes out and it's only a difference in the or the um, uncertainty in the velocity. So this can also be written as delta x into m delta v should be greater than or equal to h upon 4 pi. So this was Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. What was the significance of this principle? If it is true that you cannot simultaneously find out the position and the momentum or the motion of an electron. Then how did Bohr say that electrons are present in definite orbits and they only revolve in those different? It's impossible to talk of them simultaneously. Either you know the electron is there or you know the trajectory. You cannot know both of them together because Bohr had not considered the uh, the fact that electron can also have wave-like nature and this was not taken into consideration. So the first significance here is that the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, it totally rules out the existence of definite orbits or paths or trajectories that an electron may follow or of other similar particles which are, sub, which are of that, those dimensions which, have, which are very very small. Another point is that this would only be significant for microscopic objects. We notice this also in the case of the de Broglie wavelength. Why we do not notice the, the wavelength, the wave-like nature of macroscopic particles? The reason was that the mass is so big that the wavelength becomes very small and hence you cannot notice the wave-like nature. So the de Broglie uh, sorry, the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is also seen or it is significant only when you're talking of subatomic or uh, particles which are very, very small, microscopic objects. Let us take these two examples which will make it clear to us. The first example is that you have an object of mass 1 milligram. 1 milligram is how many kilograms? 10 to the power minus 6 kilograms. So if we apply the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle to this, then delta v is deviation in velocity into delta x should be equal to, now we have taken this uh, constant also to this side, would become h upon 4 pi m. So the, the product of the two uncertainties would be equal to 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34, that is the value of Planck's constant, kg meter square second inverse, why? Because the unit is joule second. And joule is kg meter square second to the power minus 2. And second would become second minus 1. Divided by 4 into the value of pi is 3.1416 into 10 to the power minus 6 kgs. And the value of uncertainty, uncertainty, the product of the two uncertainties, 
comes out to be 10 to the power minus 28 meters square second inverse. So meters for the uncertainty in um, position and in velocity would be meters per second, therefore it would be meters square second inverse. 10 to the power minus 28, the uncertainty is so small that it's not noticeable. But let us go for an electron. 